All right, my friends, and here is just another video response to a comment I received. So a user, I guess, from China, and I tried to run his name through Google Translator, um, and I came up with Renrong Shao. I hope I pronounced this correctly, and I hope the translation is correct. So Ren basically asked um, on my video, um, of uh, reading about uh, multiple Excel files. He asked, great, thank you for the selfless teaching. I have a question. If there are many folders, how can I summarize Excel files in different folders separately? So like a subtotal, that's my understanding. And then some, these summary files. This seems to involve two cycles, but it is still difficult to solve this problem. We will look forward to your new tutorial. Well, I used it with one cycle and maybe that's even easier to do it differently, but here is my solution. So let me first show you how you can do it. So you find this workflow, by the way, linked in the description below. Um, it's uh, the final workflow available with all the source files and all the resulting files. I have uploaded it to the Lime Hub, so you find the link in the description down below. Let me go through the notes one by one. The first one, um, let me maybe also show you how the folders look like. So um, just ignore these results files because they have been written when I first ran the workflow. But basically you find these uh, source files here in different folders um, within this workflows data area. So what I've done for this example, I've created basically um, two files in each folder, each holding 10 rows of my standard procurement data. So what we basically did is we first say, okay, um, go one for set the, the relation where it should look not to a local file system, but relative to the current workflow data area. And then say, you don't want to read files and folders, files and folders, or anything like this. You want to read the folders because the folders are the one you want to iterate through, right? So, and then you just write um, dot, dot. Um, and I just wrote it down. I didn't browse for anything. I just wrote dot, dot, because I knew that was working. So we say, okay, settings were not changed. So let's see what this results in file folder list. We now have a column of data type path, with, which is exactly what we want in our loop further down the road. And it read out the following three folders. So in this folder, there is one folder that's called Excel 1, Excel 2, Excel 3. And if you remember, that's exactly what we have here. Okay, so now we have the file folders. The, the folders the Excel reader should look into. What we need to do though, is we need to loop through these to not read them all at once. So we say we take a chunk loop start and we take one row per chunk. If you, if you look at this results table in a note monitor, it first would start with XO1, XO2, and then XO3. So we turn basically this row, this path into a variable. So now we have a variable of file type uh, of data type file path let me just quickly show you so it is path and then relative nine workflow data excel because that is all stored here in this column this is what we feed into the excel reader by clicking the little flow variable button here and choosing the path that was just created and very important here we do not read a single file but we do read files in folder. And what Nime then does is it assumes that all these files in this folder has the same structure and it puts it together. So let me show you the output of the Excel reader. If you remember, each file had 10 rows. So let's just execute and have a look here. File table. We have 20 rows, so it has concatenated um, the um, two files in that folder because they have the same structure. We only have one heading. That's exactly what we want. Next step is to create a file name. So let's just have a look at the flow variables that we have here. And we see the current iteration. So we want to dynamically create these subtotal files, right? And feed them then in the Excel writer. So what I basically do is I just join the word subtotal dash and then with the number of the current iteration, but as this is a number, it's an integer, as what you can see from this little i here, 
um, I need to turn it into a text as this is the string manipulation variable node. So you do this by using the string function and then I add the dot xlsx at the end and I append this as a new variable and I call it file name. So let me just show you how it looks like. Execute. This is how it looks like. So the file name is now subtotal dash zero dot xlsx. That is the subtotal file for folder number one. Don't forget, nine starts counting at zero, not at one. All right, then we turn that string into a path and we don't want the row ID or anything. We want the file name and it automatically adds location. Important here because we want to use it all within the data area of this very nine workflow. Set the file system not to local, which is the default setting, but instead set it to relative to and then current workflow data area. What this does basically is it creates this file name location variable of data type path and it basically writes relative to the nine workflow data area and the file name is subtotal dash zero dot xlsx and this now is something we can feed into our excel writer so we once again take the flow variable button here file name location okay everything else stays the same like this in my example, because I wanted to show this, I chose override. You could also append or fail or whatever you want to do. I mean, that's um, uh, always an option in the Excel writer. In my example, I want to override to make sure I can run this workflow multiple times. Plus what I also do, I take all the information. So in the first batch, we have basically 20 items. In the next batch, in the next folder, we have two times 10, the next 20, and then the last 20. What I also do is I take a second stream out of the Excel reader and feed it into the loop end node to make sure that all items, besides writing them into this subtotal file, all items are also collected at the end of the loop. So let's finally execute the whole thing. And what you will see is we have our 60 line items here. Plus, let me show you the file folder. You see these were created just this very moment, 1.16 p.m. That's my current time. Here we have the files. All right, and that's basically how you do it. You need one iteration, one loop. If you like this kind of stuff, make sure to like and subscribe. Maybe, uh, Ren, if that solves your problem, I would be quite happy if you could um, leave a short thank you or maybe an additional question if, if there are open questions. Um, other than that, I see you probably later today when we continue in our 66 days of data with NIME journey. See you there, take care and bye bye.